Mississippi Valley State and UConn. Look at that line. The Huskies laying 45 and a half, a total of 147 and a half in this one. Big man, you're going to have the handicap. You have said to us in week one, I am not afraid to look at large numbers. Clearly, you're not afraid here. Tell me more. Uh, so one of my favorite things to do is bet against uh, the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State. I, I just don't think we've equated at how bad they are compared to most of college basketball. And here we have a wild situation. We have the worst team in America facing arguably one of the five best teams in America. OK, when you look at Connecticut, they've already pulverized two opponents so far this season, two of teams that are probably significantly better than Mississippi Valley State. I just want to kind of talk about. The handicap, Mississippi Valley State is not going to put up any sort of stoppage from a defensive standpoint. It is a layup line when you play them. You look at a game that they played against LSU, a game I laid the number in, one by 46 LSU. Oklahoma came back, one by almost 40. The pace that Mississippi Valley State plays at is not conducive against any team due to the fact that they just don't make shots. This offense is a disaster. And when I say disaster... Mm. They're the worst team in America offensively by a decently wide margin. They can't shoot. They lost any talent they had last season. Um, they're undersized. Um, they play no sort of defense. And against these types of opponents, they get swallowed up really quick. I just want to talk about the last five or so games they played against top 55 teams. Keep in mind, lost by 46 and 39 already. Lost last year by 64 to Baylor. 45 to TCU, a couple games the year before, lost by 58 to St. John's, 42 to UAB. I've weighed 40. Arkansas beat this team by 80 a couple of years ago. They're just mm. that bad. I think this is like a 115-60 type of game. I think Connecticut absolutely hammers Mississippi Valley State. It's just a hard – it's just not they're, – they're nowhere near on the same level. UConn might have 30 offensive rebounds tonight. Uh, I, and, and keep in mind, guys, they've won their games handily in both so far, but they've only shot 30% from three UConn. That's what makes it so interesting. They're top five in offensive efficiency, but they haven't even shot the three ball well at all. I, I think they it, erupt yeah. tonight. Well, and uh, again, the line, uh, Matty Cox, a couple of people are pointing this out in the chat. The line moved at least three or four points here. Uh, towards UConn, so obviously there's some belief that uh, from the betting public, at least anyway, that this is going to be a route. Thought here, Matty Cox, of no official play. Yeah, the line's absolutely huge. Um, I mean, like this is historically huge. The and, and some of the, the databases without the extra board, just looking at the main board, which does exclude a lot of these bad bad teams. Uh, this is like the biggest line that we've seen in 20 years. I need to look at the actual extra board to see what uh, some comparables are. But typically, these huge spreads. Uh, played pretty well. I think the market's been onto that. Um, and you've seen just pretty consistent themes of the market betting these large favorites early. I, I feel like that sort of was a day one, day two overcorrection. But in this particular spot, I think the big man has it right. I just don't have any hope for the Valley uh, for the Valley stay here. Uh, one concern is Klingon's not going to probably play a ton here. Like he's been on like a minutes restriction, but this team's deep and they have like really talented freshmen. I think they're trying to prove themselves. So when you get into like the the second, third wave of dudes coming off the bench for UConn, like there's still multiple tiers above what Valley State has to offer. So I think it's just it's hard for them to like let off the gas, I guess. Uh, and Hurley has a reputation for just completely pummeling teams below his weight class. So, yeah, I think a lot sets up here The the number seems dumb delay. But I just think you look up and it's a 60 point game and, and you feel good about it. I think one and, thing I'll just throw out real quick. And, and this is one thing that we will tell the listeners. I think if you can find a team total here, I think that's a good play. Um, there's just a, a certain amount of things I, I just can't bet. We have to kind of stick with what we have, um, and and that's kind of where I'm at with it. But again, I, I felt like this was you know 55 point win. So you know I, the team total, if you can find it, that would be a good bet as well. I think. And it might be hard to find, but uh, interesting here. It is a lot of points, and Jeff says, "Hey, I got no problem with this." And you've already covered a couple of times last week with 20 plus point. But didn't you cover a 30 plus point favorite on the show yeah, last I, week? I think as well. I have no issue laying these types of numbers. Um, look, if they come in and win by 42, so be it. But again, this is a the worst team in America, and really, like it, I don't know if it's even close to the second worst team against arguably the best team in America. So, and as Matt said, 
this is a guy in Hurley who's pretty ruthless when it comes to these types yeah. of games. So, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it. mix all that together, and the big man is locked in on UConn. We roll along here, and these two uh, matchups that we're gonna talk about now and again here in a couple of minutes on the second one are always uh, viewed as two of the most intriguing November matchups every year. 